welcome to Kingdom Compliance with Dr. James Bruton, offering biblical guidelines, principles of the kingdom of heaven that will help you stay tuned in to the frequency of heaven and reap the benefits that accompany you as a citizen of the kingdom, the best the king has to offer. Today's topic is the rise of kingdom compliant servant leaders. There's a reason for participation in a local church. The ultimate reason that born-again believers should participate in a local church is because it is specifically commanded by God. Even in New Testament days, there were those who yielded to the temptation of absenting themselves from the worship services of the local church. The writer of the epistle to the Hebrews points out that members of a local church have an obligation to one another. They are to provoke one another to good works and to exhort one another to live consistent lives worthy of God. This can best be done within the context of a local church. So believers are commanded not to forsake the assembling of themselves together. Let's read Hebrews chapter 10 verses 24 and 25 for confirmation of our opening statement. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Yes, God has commanded assembling of the saints together. The obvious reason is for the benefits that come to the born-again believer who participates in the local church. But first things first, let's talk about church leadership. I believe that God has ordained leaders for the church, Christ's body, who are kingdom-compliant servant leaders. So let's define what a kingdom-compliant servant leader is. A kingdom-compliant servant leader is a spiritually mature, born-again believer who, through the process of suffering for the sake of Christ and the Word of God, is conformed to the ethical and moral standards of the kingdom and adheres strictly to the Word of God as opposed to the evil systems of the world. The kingdom compliant servant leader is willing to comply, yield, surrender, and become submissive and pliable, compatible with the guidelines, rules, and principles of the kingdom of heaven. Leadership in the church is a given. You can have good leaders or bad leaders, but having no leaders is not an option. For the church to function, someone has to lead, and others have to follow that leadership. I think that the Apostle Paul had a great following as a leader of the first century church because he became a bondservant of God first, before he became a great leader. In several of Paul's epistles, he begins with an opening similar to this one in Romans chapter 1 verse 1. Paul, a bondservant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated to the gospel of God. In alignment with our topic, a bondservant of Jesus Christ is one who willingly commits himself to work, to serve, to worship, to minister, something done as a service for the good of others. So Paul gives leaders the example of what kingdom compliance looks like. Leaders are critical because they are God's representatives, and throughout history, God has worked through the principle of representation. Yes, leaders represent God. And they hold those who they lead accountable to the word of God. They act on behalf of those they lead. And in that place of delegated authority, there can be great joy or great disaster, depending on the identity of your representative leader. God's plan for the church is that every believer be vitally connected with other believers. Leaders are God's connectors. There's no such thing as autonomous Christianity. Yes, a person can be a Christian without going to church, but he needs the church to be a Christian who obeys, pleases, and honors God. God never ordained us to function by ourselves apart from his appointed servant leaders. In Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 15, the word of the Lord says, And I will give you shepherds, pastors, according to my heart, who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Servant leaders for the kingdom are called to oversee and direct the process of discipleship. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2, Paul wrote, admonishing Timothy, And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. 
As a kingdom compliant servant leader, my job is to give to you what I have received from the Lord. Servant leaders entrust the gospel to other faithful people. When the word of God goes forth from the pulpit, it is to be taken hold by faithful people who turn around and teach it to others. Faithfulness demands time. It is not a one-shot deal. A leader can't become spiritually mature overnight. No, leadership is a long-term commitment. A church will only be as strong as its leadership because God will not skip over the leaders and move to the congregation. The church has many benefits because it is the place where the servant leader oversees the process of discipleship so that God's word and his blessings flow out toward the congregation at large, from the congregation into the community, and from the community ultimately to the nations. The benefits of participation in a local church are immediately apparent. Let's read from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 42 through 47. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together and had all things in common, and sold their possessions and goods, and divided them among all as everyone had need. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple, and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. This passage records the first meeting of the first local church. From this passage, several benefits of participation in the local church are immediately apparent. One, instruction. The Word of God says they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. Number two, fellowship. And in fellowship, it says. Number three, observance of the ordinances. And in breaking of bread, it says. Four, corporate prayer. In prayers, it says. Five, effective outreach. And fear came upon every soul, it says. Six, common cause. And had all things common, it says. Finally, seven, mutual assistance. It says they divided them among all as anyone had need. Even in addition to these seven benefits, also included are four other benefits of participation in the local church. See if you can find them. Worship, discipline, pastoral oversight, and obedience to God's command. So then, participation in the local church is not optional for the child of God. It is imperative and yields physical and eternal benefits. True servant leaders of the kingdom are shepherds. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 1-4, through 4, the apostle Peter wrote, The elders who are among you I exhort, I who am a fellow elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that will be revealed. Shepherd the flock of God which is among you, serving as overseers, not by compulsion, but willingly, not for dishonest gain, but eagerly, nor as being lords over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. Peter does not command, but exhorts. He does not claim power to rule over all pastors and churches. It was ordained by God that Peter and a few other apostles would be witnesses of Christ's sufferings. But it is the privilege of all true believers to partake of the glory that shall be revealed. In John chapter 21, verse 16, Jesus first asked Peter a question. Then he gave Peter a command. John 21, 16. He said to him again a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. So in the passage we just read from 1 Peter, Peter passes this command on to other church leaders. They are to shepherd, to care for the interests of God's people in every way, not for dishonest gain. The true pastor's motive is to do God's will, not to chase money. 
the instruction not to be lords is a rejection of the world's tendency to dominate. Bossing and coercion have no place in the church. Kingdom compliant servant leaders lead by teaching and by being examples to the flock. Christ is the chief shepherd of the whole flock in heritage of God, and all faithful ministers will receive a crown of unfading glory, infinitely better and more honorable than all the authority, wealth, and pleasure of the world. True servant leaders serve first before they lead. Any leader who has to be begged to take a position of leadership in the church isn't really a leader. True leaders serve with the eagerness and commitment that comes from knowing they are doing God's will, not from leadership to advance his personal fortunes, advance a personal agenda, or take a power trip. True leaders are humble and are centered on helping others, not self-centered. They recognize that they are under the authority of God as his representatives. Sheep are prone to wonder and are vulnerable to attack. Sheep must be protected and led. Servant leaders, pastors, are to protect and preserve the sheep, not destroy them. Pastors are shepherds who serve as role models, illustrating in their lives what they teach so that the flock can not only follow their words, but also their works. Servant leaders, shepherds, are God's representatives to his people to deal with the conflicts that will inevitably arise within the church. Therefore, servant leaders must communicate divine truth. Expository preaching is expounding the word of God in such a way that his people understand it and know how to apply it. The tragedy today is, that there are too many born-again believers who are being defeated by, not delivered through, life's problems. And many of these problems exist because of hard-headed, self-willed believers who don't know the Word of God as they ought to. They don't apply the Word of God as they ought to, or they refuse to apply what they do know concerning the Word of God. No kingdom-compliant pastor would ever make people obey the truth. Instead, he ensures to the fullest extent of his ability as an expositor that they understand the word and how it should work in their lives. The goal of the servant leader, pastor, and shepherd should be to teach and preach the Bible because it is the standard of total truth. Servant leaders must give their primary energy to knowing and teaching the word of God. The church desperately needs skillful, knowledgeable, caring, and committed leaders. Let me show you a wonderful example of what I just shared about servant leaders. Let's read from the book of Acts chapter 6, verses 1 through 7. Now in those days, when the number of the disciples was multiplying, there arose a complaint against the Hebrews by the Hellenists, because their widows were neglected in the daily distribution. Then the twelve summoned the multitude of the disciples and said, It is not desirable that we should lead the word of God and serve tables. Therefore, brethren, seek out from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Now, the Hebrews were Aramaic-speaking Jews native to Palestine. The Hellenists were Greek-speaking Jews, usually born outside of Palestine. After Pentecost, the believers had all things in common in a unity of love, but tensions developed because of alleged discrimination on the basis of language and culture. In the 400-year period between the Testaments, Jews who spoke Greek rather than Aramaic or Hebrew were considered liberal or worldly. However, the Word of God has and is enough to take up all the thoughts, cares, and time of the apostles. The apostles knew that their job was to keep the unity of the church by devoting themselves exclusively to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Others within the church would have to assist with solving the problem. The persons chosen to serve tables had to be duly qualified. They had to be filled with gifts and graces of the Holy Spirit necessary to rightly managing this trust, men of truth and hating covetousness. This is what happens when the church has kingdom-compliant servant leaders. Conflicts are quickly resolved, unity is maintained, and its impact increases tremendously because its people are carrying out God's chosen agenda for the church. 
But all this begins with servant leaders and flows through them to the people. If the church is to be unified and operate as a team, then the servant leaders, the pastors and the shepherds must model that unity and oneness of purpose among themselves. Until a universal church and its leadership begin to take seriously its role of applying God's word to conflicts within the body of Christ, the church will continue to experience the conflict, disrespect, and limited cultural impact it is now suffering. The church must have godly servant leaders who are kingdom compliant, capable, godly men and women who will not cut corners or accept bribes to look the other way. Rather, they will accept responsibility and represent Jesus Christ not only in his church, but also in the larger culture of the world. The greatest servant leaders in the world won't help people who refuse to follow those leaders. And the church only develops and grows properly when each member plays his or her individual roles. Arise, shine, kingdom compliant servant leaders, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. If you would like to refer this episode to others, click on share and subscribe to the YouTube channel to stay up to date when new episodes drop. Thanks for joining me. I'm glad you did. I hope you join me next time for Kingdom Compliance with Dr. James Bruton, where we stay tuned in to the frequency of heaven.